and highlights from the Reds and the Cubs tonight at 11 o'clock. So stay right there. One, get him, Go, kids. guys. <laughs> 76,000 screaming fans. It seems like yesterday since I first started here at Channel 7, but there have been too many yesterdays and last weeks and last years to make that possible. There are very few of us in any line of work who can brag about four decades at the same place. That's something I'm very proud of, especially since I've always been home. Like a lot of you, I grew up watching the news on WHIO TV, and I still remember how cool it was to get to work with Don Wayne and Ed Kraling and Gil Whitney and Jim Baldridge. Now, my Waynesville math tells me that 41 years is a lot of games to cover. I had a front row seat when the Reds went wire to wire in 1990. I was there for both frustrating finishes as the Bengals never could quite figure out the 49ers in the Super Bowl. I covered the Flyers run to the Elite Eight two different times. Who knows what would have happened this past season. I also got to see Wright State's amazing run to a Division II national title back in 1983. Those big games get all the big spotlight, but for my money, the best part of my job was always covering high school sports. I will miss being on the sidelines every Friday night at football games or underneath the basket in a sweaty local gym. Still makes my day when somebody says, remember me? I was the athlete of the week back in 1991. Let me tell you, my memory isn't bad, but it's not what it used to be. One thing I will never forget, though, is all of you inviting me into your homes for all of these years. That is a memory that will never fade. So what do I do in retirement? Well, I'm not going to dwell on the past. I'm ready to start a new chapter, trying not to drive my wife too crazy and spending more time with my daughter and my grandson. I'll admit there's a small part of me that says, hey, why leave now? Just stay right there a while longer. No, my friends, my work is done here. I'm ready to enjoy life starting right now. Thanks all of you so much. It's been a great ride. The swing pass on the outside to Johnson, in for the touchdown. You know, I got excited a lot. I want them to feel like they're there. and not just sitting there watching the game. Down the sidelines, into the end zone for a touchdown. I want them to feel everything. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm always a fan. A sports fan from the time he was born. Mike was the baby of the Hartsock family, younger brother of Sandy and Susan, and only son of Phyllis and Dave. Mike's dad was a basketball star at Waynesville High School. He had a chance to play with the University of Kentucky, Adolph Rupp, and I still have the, uh, at that time they sent you a telegram and to come, and, but he was kind of on the short side. Dave Hartsock instead played for NCR in the old Industrial League. Watching him formed the foundation of Mike's passion for sports. We, we had a, a basket right out the, outside the, the house. And, and even if no one else was around. I could make a game out of myself and, and would do play by play. I'd make up names. Uh, I, I, you know, it, it wasn't names of guys playing then. It was just names. Tommy Thompson, Johnny Johnson. You know. Though not quite the scoring champ his dad was, Mike made his mark as a point guard. I was until not long ago, maybe, maybe five, ten years ago. I was the all-time assist leader, passing the ball and helping other people score uh, at Waynesville for a long time. Mike started his broadcasting career in radio news, but he was only too happy to team up on Friday nights with another guy just starting out to do WHIO's Game of the Week. The very first sports broadcast I did in at WHIO was Mike and I working together at a Trotwood Northmont football game. And when TV had an opening in the sports department in early 1982. I'll we'll have baseball scores and highlights from the Reds and the Cubs tonight at 11 o'clock. And I got lucky. I was in the right place at the right time in the right building. He soon met some of the biggest names in professional sports. Mike had such a great personality and a way to connect with people. And, uh, you know, we were always being interviewed. We're on the other side. So, you know, really, you know, you learn from guys like that, uh, you know, that are just comfortable to be around. This is Anthony Munoz for New Center 7 Sports. The two became such good friends that Mike dared ask the future Hall of Famer to do a regular feature. 
we have to win this ball game. We have to stay on pace with everybody else. So it is a must win. With my Bengal diary, this is Anthony Munoz for New Center 7. I didn't pay Anthony anything. He didn't ask for anything. And his first answer to me was, sure, love to do that. And Mike's skill on the links got him invited to play charity tournaments with golf greats like Nancy Lopez. We were laughing. She goes, okay, anybody anybody makes this putt, I'm going to give a big kiss on the lips. You got my ball. You were ready for it. There you it. go. I made that putt. <laughs> but it didn't take Mike long to see. I made some mistakes. Some of the athletes he'd idolized as a kid fall off that pedestal. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do to do stories and report on Pete Rose being banned from baseball. He was my hero. Sit back, relax, and enjoy Dayton Flyer basketball. You're watching it on WHIO-TV. Butler is 11-2 and two unbeaten. Mike was just a guy born to be in sports. One of the highlights of Mike's career was calling University of Dayton basketball games, which he did for more than 30 years. Eric loses it, and there's a foul. He was very, very knowledgeable. He also hosted the Sunday Morning Coaches Show in those first few years with legendary Flyers coach Don Donaher. And he just had a di disposition. It was, it was easy to work with. And coaches aren't easy to work with because they're always under stress. And uh, he, he was just, uh, just a joy to be with. And he worked at building relationships with the players. I think he's just a just a great person. Flyers forward Anthony Grant found the same Mike Hartsock when he came back as head coach three decades later. His personality, his his genuine nature, his humanity, I think is what stands out. Uh, and then the way he goes about doing his job, he's extremely knowledgeable, extremely passionate about what he does. The competition was not what the Flyers can expect once the real season starts. What Mike had to do was really a, a pretty large task. His radio voice of the Flyers counterpart, Larry Hanskin, admired Mike's ability to handle it all. But if the Browns don't keep this crowd quiet on Sunday, Cleveland could be in for a long afternoon. He not only had to prepare for those, those broadcasts, but at the same time, uh, the amount of legwork and sweat equity involved in what he did covering high school sports. You know, he had all of those plates spinning as well. Not to mention a new addition at home. This is Jessica Lynn Hartsock. Uh, not quite 12 hours old, bless you. He proudly introduced his newborn daughter to our viewers when he became a dad in 1984. Already a daddy's girl, pretty much so. She's, she, oh goodness, you're embarrassing people. And as she grew up, everybody knew what Jessica's dad did for a living. Kids at school, I think sometimes they give me that stay right there. So stay right there. But if they found Mike's signature line a bit corny. At that time, it was still cool to have your dad drop off a football in a helicopter. And sometimes he delivered a soccer ball. And Mike Hartzog. Covering high school games, no matter the sport, is what Mike loved more than any other part of his job. If there's something I'm going to miss, it's covering our kids. I'm 65 years old, and every Friday night, I go out with a big camera on my shoulder to shoot a high school football game. Not many people in my job do that. And when those kids and their families went home after the game, Mike went back to the newsroom to write and edit his highlights and then deliver them in that unique Hartsock style. Hi again, everybody. Ready or not, it's time to kick off another high school football season. Whether it was two 7-0 teams or two teams that hadn't won a game, that made those kids night. That may have made those kids season if we had that, had highlights of that game on and, uh, and showed those kids. Working nights and weekends, Mike missed a lot with his own family. You know, my wife has put up with a lot, and uh, my daughter has put up with a lot. I miss stuff from Jessica when she was growing up. I miss, I miss stuff that she was doing because I had to be on the air. And now there's someone else he doesn't want to miss spending time with. My name is Alex, and Mike Hartsock is my grandpa. My favorite memory of my grandpa is playing video games. He's not really good, my grandpa. I guess it's, I guess it's sort of repaying them, hopefully. Hopefully they want me to be around, so. But, uh, but the sports I'll miss, yeah, I'll miss it. But life goes on, and I'm ready for it. 
Mike. Going to miss you on the air, Mike. I thank you on behalf of all the viewers out there for all that you have done. You deserve this next chapter in your life. Congratulations. Uh, you've done a, a super, super job. We're going to miss you. We wish you all the best as uh, you take on whatever challenges uh, lie ahead for you. And we love you. Mike, on behalf of the line of basketball coaches at the University of Dayton that you work so closely with, we wish you nothing but the best in your retirement. Thanks for everything. Dad, we're super proud of you. We love you, and congratulations on your retirement. Happy retirement, Grandpa. Love you. And Mike, I wish you the best, best retirement that's possible. You've been a great son, and I love you.